Hello. Recently, I was setting up this Marantz SD420 cassette deck using um, a, a Wow and Flutter cassette from Koenig. But I'm not convinced this is the best cassette, so I bought some new ones from weloveanalog.com. So it's We Love Analog Audio Laboratories, and these include Wow and Flutter and also uh, Azimuth tapes. So we'll start with the Wow and Flutter. Now, the first thing I want to do is just take a look at what the Koenig cassette does using WF GUI software uh, and have a look at the uh, speed and wham flutter readings we get from that tape. So here we can see we're reading uh, on the RMS meter uh, about 0.06% and on the peak it's pretty much peaking at around about 0.1 occasionally just over 0 0.1 uh, that's at 3150 hertz and we're reading about 3145 hertz back. Uh, I think any attempt at adjusting that will make it worse, so we'll leave that speed alone. So that's what we're getting on the Koenig cassette. Now, if we get lower readings on this new cassette, then it proves that the uh, a lot of the wow and flutter we're seeing there is not from the cassette deck, but uh, from the tape itself. Let's try the 3150 hertz uh, round flutter tape that we've bought. The first thing I'll do I think is fast forward a bit and go there. It's a higher level, we can see. The actual uh, wow and flutter readings, oh look, the frequency is very different. The other one was 3140, this is 3118. I mean, this is a big difference. That's a concern, so it makes me wonder which one I should believe. The uh, wow and flutter measurements I'm getting, the readings, are similar or slightly higher. Let's. Um, Fast forward to say the middle of the tape. Okay, that's better. Now that doesn't mean, of course, that the wire and flutter is worse on the start of the tape. It could be that this cassette deck is doing a better job in the middle of the tape. And I think you'll agree those figures are very similar to what we got from the Koenig cassette. but the frequency is distinctly lower. Right, having left that to settle for a little while, what do you think? Are those figures similar to the Koenig cassette or very slightly better? Okay, well those figures I'd say are very slightly better, but the frequency is a concern to me. That is definitely low. So I'll take the lid off this and adjust the motor so that that reads 3150. It's a two motor design. This is the um, capstan servo motor. There's a small adjuster at the back of that. So uh, I will tweak it to get that up to 3150. Okay, we've adjusted up to closer to 3150. Uh, whether you'd actually hear that is another matter, but. Uh, Let's try and get it right. And we're reading RMS values of 0 0.06 and peak values of, on average, I'd say just under 0.1%. So I think it is slightly lower than it was with the uh, Koenig cassette. So one of the other cassettes we have here now is for Azimuth. Uh, and it's set up with a, a Sony Azimuth reference tape TY231. Uh, so with these frequencies, we can set the um, phase between the two channels to be exactly the same, and that guarantees then, if you look at the, you know, think about the way the head's built relative to the cassette, uh, the tape going past here, uh, if the head block is at an angle, then the left and right channels will appear at different times. So if you guarantee that you get the head 
uh, to read both channels at the same time, then you've guaranteed perfect azimuth, which is this adjustment. And if that's wrong, over here somewhere, the phase error in the audio is not that important. What's more important is you'll get terrible treble response and a sort of slushy sound because uh, it won't be able to pick up the high frequency content that's recorded vertically on the tape. It'll be going across several of the waves. And as um, Nakamichi pointed out in one of their advertising flyers, uh, if you have a head azimuth error of 0.1%, uh, response at 19 kilohertz isn't down by a few dB. It's a physical impossibility. So azimuth is really important. So we'll uh, set this one up with an oscilloscope to look at the phase difference between the two channels. So initially we're going to just look at the uh, output from this cassette, which should start at 6.3 kilohertz. We're seeing some phase variation, which I find odd. I'm seeing a little bit of uh, a shift in the phase between one channel and the other. This is left and right channels, and I don't know why that is. So that's a bit of concern. Could that just be the wear and flutter of the tape or the machine? And because it's um, triggering off one channel, as there's wear and flutter, the other one appears to move. It might be that. Now it says there's four minutes of 6.3 kilohertz and then it'll go to 10 kilohertz which will be a more um, stringent test. Let's just do a quick measurement of the frequency. Yep, 10 kilohertz. And then later again there's 15 kilohertz. Now, if we went straight to the 15 kilohertz to set the azimuth, the risk is that you could be a whole cycle out. So you need to start with a lower frequency to make sure you're basically in. Because uh, here, for example, they look uh, 180 degrees out, so you wouldn't know which way to adjust it to, to get the frequency, the, to get the, the two lined up. So it's important to start with a lower frequency. So I've popped this door off, which is for head cleaning and azimuth. On this one, the azimuth screw is on the left. I think the one on the right is just uh, to tighten up the head block. So we'll start with that. It's got the phasing a bit better. Go to the 15, no, the 10 kilohertz. If I maybe overshot slightly, come back slightly. Now go to the 15 kilohertz. There's a bit less response, so I need to increase the gain. And they're already in phase. There's no more to do to that. Right, I'm going to set XY display, which uh, should give us a list of due pattern. And that is the best way to show phase uh, difference between two signals. And we're aiming for that to be just a horizontal line. The more it opens up, the bigger the phase difference between the two channels. Okay, so I'm happy that the azimuth is right. Uh, actually, <laughs> actually, it was extremely close. It was really not worth adjusting at all, but that's a good sign. Now, uh, finally we have this tape. Now I'm not entirely certain of the point of this one. You've got 315, 333 and 400 hertz at 0 dB. And I think this one will be used as a Dol uh, Dolby level reference cassette. So you're looking for getting the Dolby level. Uh, the, the VU meter should come up to zero point there for Dolby. Uh, operation. So let's uh, just confirm that's right, but I'm not going to make any adjustments on this. Now these VU meters are not particularly bright. Let's uh, see if we can set you up a little bit to see those. That's the 315 hertz, 
and it should be at 0 dB I think and actually it's reading pretty much at there isn't it because you just see that one shimmering and check the V meters again again it's just sitting right on the edge there you could argue that the right channel could use a very small adjustment but um, I'm going to leave that well alone I think Good. I think I've got this Marantz uh, ST420 cassette deck set up perfectly now. It was miles out anyway, which is a good sign, but I think the slightly better wow and flutter readings on these new cassettes were enough to convince me that they were correct and that the speed was very, very slightly out on the Koenig cassette. You'd probably never hear the difference, but it's, you know, it's worth setting up properly. These I bought uh, from, uh, they say, We Love Analog Audio Laboratories, but they I bought them on eBay. So they're not terribly expensive, and I'd recommend those. Please remember to like, share, and especially subscribe, and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. <laughs>